There's, okay. Oh, I love it. Hi, everyone. <laughs> um, I don't know, I, I guess I'm introducing tonight. Oh, okay. um, I'm Sarithkin and uh, my sister is Shaxi. And we're here tonight with- uh, it's Yulia. Yulia. I always want to pronounce the J, but I know that it's not. Uh, who's a Laurel and a Pelican and Ontier and a fabulous, um, at, what'd you say, a master administrator? Recognized for her Roman persona research with a carp, golden swan, and Laurel. There you go. <laughs> and, and yes, I have a mania for organization. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's so amazing. So welcome. Like, thank you so much for agreeing to do this with us. Um, oh, I'm really looking forward to, to learning about you. Well, I have 64 years to cover, so so go to the bathroom, grab your popcorn. <laughs> We're going to be here all night. <laughs> so how did you find the SCA and uh, what attracted you to it? Well, to, to drastically summarize, because I, I am in fact 64, uh, I, I grew up in, in Adiantum and I, I have seen the SCA from a distance for a, a long, long time. But Middle Ages is, is, is not my strong suit. I've, uh, I, one of the, the things that, that ignited my passion for history uh, a long time ago when uh, I was a student at, at University of Portland was the extension program that they had at the time for uh, uh, my sophomore year of college, where I got to live in beautiful downtown Europe. I, I went to school in, in Salzburg, Austria, and traveled wherever the trains would take me. So I got to see history with my boots on the ground, and, and, and I, loved, I loved that, all, all aspects of history. But I didn't really do anything with it for several years. But... About the time, uh, uh, shortly before I discovered the internets, I, I studied, um, I had, had uh, picked up a book called The First Man in Rome, which was by Colleen McCullough. And, and the, the, the books that she wrote are, are not necessarily any great shakes, but they, they took me back to the time that, that I had tromped through ancient Rome in, in what's now ancient for me, 1975, 1976. And I got really interested. You want me to pull up the picture so that you can? Sure. Okay, I'll do that. So about the time I, I got the AOL disc like everybody else. I'll, I'll go back to the beginning. There we go. Maybe a little further back. Oh. Uh, this is the first one that I have. Oh, okay. Um, anyway, I was reading The First Man in Rome and I got my AOL desk and started researching. I'm gonna pull up the book. There's a lot of stuff there, guys. <laughs> okay, I'm not finding the book. I'm sorry. I'm train wrecking this. Where's the book? There it is. There we go. So, the first man in Rome. I, I started looking at, at what I could find on the internet, and I started studying... Uh, what I could about the background of, of the First Man in Rome series, which is set, this particular book is set in uh, uh, the mid second century uh, BC. And the principal characters are fighting in in what's the the late republic so i got really interested in so what what was rome like that and i i, I started researching and i stumbled across a a mystery story story set um, in 
second century Rome by a couple of, of professors in uh, Colombia of archi uh, architecture. And they had created a virtual reality mystery story called SPQR and loaded it up on, there it is, Time Warner Pathfinder. And it was, it was tremendously engaging to see a recreation of of what the, the buildings around the Roman Forum. This, uh, and for background, this is probably rendered uh, from what we know about the Roman Forum at its height about the second century when all of, of the buildings were, were built. And I, I, I patiently watched these, these beautiful photos downloaded about a 14-4 modem and was trying to solve the, the mystery of, of the five characters whose scrolls were sprinkled around the forum. And inevitably, I'm not much of a game player, but I was really engaged in this and I got stuck and I had to, to register on what was called the Rostra of the Roman forum and, and, and throw myself on the mercy of my other players. And because, I had recently read First Man in Rome. I, I chose the first name that came to me, you, Julilla, which is people who've known me the longest call me either Julilla or Julilla. And I started posting online. This was my first online experience. I was really excited and interested not only in, in ancient Rome, but what I could find on this amazing new medium. Well, as time progressed, the professors created a, a commercial CD-ROM of, of the mystery game. Uh, this, is the, this is the official handbook that we're looking at for SPQR. And this is a poster that hangs up in, in my dressing room. And it's, it's, it's just, it's so evocative to see pictures of, of what Rome might have looked like. Well, as a companion piece to the, to the commercial rollout of CD-ROM, the, the two professors and their, and their students became, who became their staff, created a, a site called Ancient Sites. And me being bright and shiny, uh, and I, I also, I was self-employed. I, I was a freelance writer and, and a, a web designer, so I, I could I could sort of tailor my busy times to when I wanted to. So I was I I spent way too much time on ancient sites helping out to the point that eventually one of, of the owners contacted me and said, Would you be interested in in being a remote site administrator? So I, I actually got paid for my addiction. <laughs> That's super cool. <laughs> Which was super cool, and and here's a here's a rendering of of ancient sites, and at its height there were probably now keep it keep in mind people there were there were several cities besides Rome that that uh, you could belong to in ancient sites Rome Athens. Uh, Celtia which really wasn't a city Babylon and so forth, so there were probably about 100,000 different user accounts on ancient sites. And, and it got to be so pop popular that, that we actually had a couple of, of live get togethers down in New Orleans, one in, in the late 1990s and one in 2003. So I got to meet these people. And, and what's, what's more germane to the SCA is, is I kept on researching about ancient Rome. Part, part of, of what happened at, uh, with the construct of ancient sites is you could have your own personal home. So I, I, each, each user account had a, a, a home with about four or five different rooms. And I wanted to, I wanted to tell the story of, of what you might experience if you actually went to my Roman home. And that's, and so I started looking into how people dressed and what their homes were like. 
and and so forth, so on and so forth. So I, I kept I kept on researching and then ultimately put together my own website, eventually called Villa Ulilla, where I talked about how people live their lives. How, how amazing is it that uh, a video game sort of puts you on the path to a carp? It's pretty cool. No. <laughs> and eventually a laurel. So yeah. this, this, this is your... So this is my courtyard. Okay. And there, there's down in the corner, there's, there's one of my servants uh, who, who is describing uh, Domina Yolila is... is asking me to bid you welcome and and offers you a, a cup of Falernian wine and so on and so forth. Very cool. And I and I got and I got interested in cooking and and costume. This is so this is the very first costume that Roman costume that I ever made. One of the things that I did because uh, this the the virtual reality was good for for making buildings but not so much people so one of the jobs that i did was to create little avatars for everybody and i pillaged uh pre-raphaelite paintings shamelessly and i modeled my own avatar on on a pre-raphaelite painting called la Fileus, which i don't, didn't throw a picture in and this this is my attempt to recreate that particular costume and and even at this stage, I knew that women tended to to uh, whiten their faces somewhat. So so this is me about oh <laughs> twenty three years ago. Wow, cool, that's awesome. And this is a page of of the website that I created. I. I I just as as I kept researching, I kept putting up in information on on the recipes. Uh, I started to collect I started collecting cookbooks and various other books, which are all behind me. Oh, and then and then ultimately, sa sadly, the the dot com bust and and the the one one of the, the two creators was a really energetic guy, but he kept on changing things and he drastically changed ancient sites and shut it down to, to roll out the next big thing, which got eaten up right away with the dot-com bust. So it all went away and all of those 100,000 real and duplicate people that I had gotten to know were gone. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh crap! Well, what do I do now? Because I, I was really invested in what I had had come to learn about ancient Rome. So I, I, I knew there was there was nothing would necessarily stop me from that. But I started, I started looking around for, well, what can I do now? I came across a a, a, a online community. It's still around called Nova Roma. And you have a slide of that, right? I do. Okay, I'll find it. Keep talking. I'll find it. Well, uh, right before the the uh, there you, there you go. So so this what you're looking at is my citizen page on Nova Roma that's still out there, and. Because I I tend to throw my once once they let me in I I throw threw myself off the, the deep end so I I started reaching out to to people who had registered in the the northwest area that's how I got to know Vesta and Neil and a couple of other people who who were actually in the SCA too who who since moved away but. One of the, the things that really bugged me about Nova Roma is they fairly humorless. <laughs> and, you know, 
I like I I love history. I've got a passion for it, but I want to have a good time studying it because it's not very interesting if if you don't have a little bit of fun with it. So I I learned I learned a lot about Roman religion um, and uh, a whole lot about how not to behave with uh, other people online. <laughs> I feel like there's stories there. Yeah. <laughs> well, every, everybody knows internet trolls. And, yeah, and one of the things that I think is really important, especially when, when you can't sit down and have a, have a discussion with people face to face is say, you know, I may be wrong about this, okay? But, but here's, what, here's what I've got to say. There wasn't a lot of that. So I, I progressed through the chairs of, of Nova Roman, it eventually wound up in the Senate and was, was also taking a Latin class at our local community college. Uh, I, I belong to a local Rotary Club, which is about as far away from the SCA as you can get. But, but one of the weekly speakers taught Latin at our local community college and I had taken French and I learned German when I was at the University of Salzburg, but I thought, well, let, let's give Latin a shot. And happily that decision is really what brought me to the SCA. Oh, wow. Because I was sitting there f flogging my 40 year old brains to learn uh, about Latin declensions and most of my fellow students were in the classroom here in Wenatchee, but there were a couple of students who telecommuted from the, the North Campus in OMEC, one of whom, it, and, and I think there's a, a photo of him in, in uh, my presentation, Dahlbach, who was usually, they, they threw up a, a, a screen a few minutes before the class started, a lot like like Zoom, and he here was Dahlbach. There he is. He's one of my oldest friends in the SCA, and he was he was usually working on on uh, projects, uh, oftentimes ink weaving, which he is really excellent at. And occasionally, I'd say, "Hey, hey, Dave, what are you doing?" And you talk a little bit about it. Well, about this time of year or early in November in 2001, 2002, uh, a couple of my fellow classmates were handing out flyers for a demo. And I, I, had, I had come up against demos for the SCA in the past, but Again, my full disclaimer, not terribly interested in the Middle Ages. We'll, we'll, be, we'll be super polite about it. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm with you. <laughs> but here came all of these folks down from Dregate and, and the, some of my fellow students and, and a woman who would be really instrumental in, in my path, uh, Amber Sylvanas to put on a demo and there were a whole lot of classes on ankle weaving and costume and dance uh, uh viscount Ulfgar, way before he was a viscount or a knight uh, was part of drag gate and, and he he they all including him talked about all of the fun things you could do in the sca and and I, I decided, you know, I'm not interested in the Middle Ages, but I really am interested in these people. So I decided to, to help form a, a branch here called now, now called the College of Crane Haven. It's the third branch that's lived in, uh, that's existed in the area. And, and is, we've, we've been here since 12th night, 2002. And I dutifully made, went down to Joanne's and got a got a, a pattern and made myself a medievalish dress, <laughs> and went to Twelfth Night. There it is. 
it is it is one wearing um that's that's me with uh mistress oso of of dragate before she was a laurel well i had a wonderful time and and uh we were we were granted incipient status for the College of Crane Haven, and just as I was leaving and I was walking down the hall, this was at uh, uh, the Baron and Madrona's classical Twelfth Night uh, venue at, at the Red Lion, and I saw off in the distance a Roman walking away from me. I said, "Wait, <laughs> wait." <laughs> And I picked up all of these 12 yards of, of fabrics and went pell-mell down the hallway to, to uh, virtually tackle Titus uh, Art Antonius Archelaus and said, do could be Roman. And he looked at me like I was nuts. <laughs> well, He's a very reserved guy in a lot of ways. <laughs> well, well, sure. <laughs> That's awesome. And, and the rest, as they say, is history. I, I, uh, I was, I was off and running. Awesome. Are there any slides in here that we need to go back to, or should I switch to the regular photos? Oh, you can, you, you can do regular photos. Okay. I, I, I just wanted to give you plenty, plenty of ammunition. <laughs> well, thank you. It's, it's the most organized any of our interviewees have ever been. I know. Sean. What did I say? Well, I don't. Rowena was pretty. That's organized. true. Yeah. So this goes way back. Um, about four years ago, my my parents decided that that they didn't want to uh, maintain their house in 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 Eugene any longer, and she sent me some stuff, including a a, a letter that I wrote to the Easter Bunny when I was about seven. And it be, being me, even at age seven, there were a whole lot of directions to the Easter Bunny as to where my eggs would be and where my brother's eggs would be. And that's just... <laughs> you had to let him, let him know. So this is, when I, this is when I first met you. Oh yeah. So this was what, 2010, 2011? I, I had met Skeggy and Tazia uh, when they were first uh, king and queen at the Feast of Red Lanterns up in Dragate. And at that point, our little college was asking uh, the crown to, to, be, to be, can we graduate to full branch status? And they really seemed like fun people, and partly because yes, they they did grant us. We we can now move into adulthood, <laughs> so I was back in in Wisconsin one summer when, uh, uh, right around the time uh, that September Crown was happening, and I learned that that Skeggy had won Crown the second time, and. I shot off a, 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 an application because it really was. I, uh, it was a full blown application to, to her grace Tazia. And I said, I really, really, really want to be on your retinue, please. <laughs> can I, can I please? And, and again, they probably thought I was a little bit crazy. But she said, yes, you, yes, you can be on, on my retinue. And, and I started out just being your, your kind of run-of-the-mill lady-in-waiting, but I got to Ursulmus and I was hanging out in the uh, hotel room of, of Her Grace Tasia and her then Her Majesty. And I learned that their court coordinator had just accepted uh, a graduate program over in Hawaii. And they asked if <laughs> yes. Okay, there were a couple of le lessons that I learned in this, but, but yes, I did say yes right away without asking how much time is it gonna take? What are the duties involved? 
So I, 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 I got into a, more than a little trouble with my husband after the fact. But it was, it was, a, it was an amazing, amazing experience. It's a great that, that job. Is a, yeah, it's a great job. If anybody ever gets the opportunity to do that job or to be an assistant to that job, jump on it if you have the time. The only thing that I will keep in mind, and, and I think this goes for, for people who are, are married in the SCA, but, but I'm, I'm, I'm a, I've got a mixed marriage. My husband does occasionally come to events now, especially because he found a really good friend down in a corner bear and they could sit back in court and crack wise. But he didn't have much experience with the SCA. And all of a sudden I had taken on a big job and there were a lot of non-negotiables. He was still working. And it, it, it places a strain on your marriage when you take on big commitments and you don't talk about them with your support team. And it's so, so important that you do. I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, I'm, I'm laughing too. Uh, there might have been a, an event where I was just figuring out I was pregnant and uh, somebody decided that winning Kingdom Champion, despite the fact that I kept saying no, <laughs> was a good idea. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> oh, so I was, I was so lucky to be able to, to take that on. And not, not only because they were an amazing couple to work with, and you think I'm organized, Tazia is incredible. There, there, was, there wasn't a thing that, that she couldn't see to and, and didn't. So I, I and, and the other retinue were, were incredibly lucky to, to have been able to serve them. So what we're looking at, what we're looking at was, was Amber's white scarf, right? Yes. Well, and I mentioned Amber, Amber too has, has a really important role in, uh, in my development because she, there she is. And, and at this point, I'll, I, I want to talk about her a little bit because, because she, Okay, I've got several pictures of her, so um, go ahead and talk, and I'll scroll through them. You know, she's amazing. She's been in the SCA for for a long, long time, and and my first experience with with her was when we were forming the College of Crane Haven, and she said nothing happens in the SCA without volunteers, so service is to the game is really important. When, when, you get, when you go to an event, offer to sit at gate, offer, offer to help set up. She, 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 had, she had seen this for years and she really inculcated it with, with the, this, this very new group uh, at the College of Crane Haven, myself included. Well, nothing that she touched ever turned bad she she was a she was a master at at rapier and and it, i think the thing that's really touches me about this picture is she she was already suffering some fairly debilitating back pains so she wasn't she she was doing more uh, marshalling at this point than than fencing but i i I suspect she was thinking that that she was never going to be able to earn her white scarf because of of the the physical trouble she was going through. So it was an incredibly emotional moment for all of us to see her get it. I'll never I'll never forget this moment as long as I live. Sweet. So one of the one of the really cool things about serving on retinue is when you get to go cool places. And this this was down at Gulf Wars, and you can see we're all working really hard here. <laughs> Bunch of thrown lizards. <laughs> yeah, I love this. 
so I, I talked about the fun loving nature of drag eight and they really, they really were the most fun group that I've ever been involved with. So this is the stick horse race up at, at uh, September Revel, which is held way above the back of beyond. It's, it's uh, you, you travel north uh, to, to Nasket and then up 5,000 feet into the mountains. So you're far away from everywhere. Cell phones don't work. Uh, the, near, the nearest store is of, of any size and, and even that's fairly small is about 45 minutes away. This, the September Revel site is one of the few places that I've ever felt completely, completely in the SCA moment. So, so here I am, I, I'm lining up with, and uh, next to me is, is Hare Lyle, who sadly passed away a, a couple of years ago. And the, it wasn't just any old stick horse race because there were obstacles and you had to, to spear things. And gosh, it was fun. <laughs> this, Look how amazing your hair is there. Oh. I love, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you do good hair pieces. And the cool thing about it is, is, uh, you know, it's, it's a little bit of, of work to get the, the falls braided up, but, but it takes me about five minutes to, to slap all that on and then, and then I'm good to go. And is it like a, a headband and then a little like bun thing? This this particular one is probably about thirty six inches long before it's it's all braided up, and I I actually did three braids and then I I anchor it together with fishing line, and then then it's rubber banded at the very backs and I very seldom take that off so I just. There, there are a couple of combs right here. Nice. So it doesn't slip back. And I, I, slip, I slip that on. And my, my own hair is only about this long. So I, I anchor it up here and I down there. And I put the hairpiece on. And I slap the, the circlet on. And then a bun over the top. And it's... Solid as a rock, <laughs> and it's next level um, persona presentation. It's just amazing. Well, uh, you, you you saw okay. This this is one of my. <laughs> I I love that tunic. I've, uh, this is from Linen Garb, and they do a fantastic job. When I was. Uh, putting my documentation together for Golden Swan. This is this is a riff on what's called the Dion Dionysus tunic, which is which is complete. It's it's a complete fourth or fifth century tunic, which uh, you can see pictures at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. But they they recreated it for uh, Ontario fifty year. So when when I saw that they had done that, I I, I cheered and squeed and bought one. <laughs> Jumped on it, <laughs> and my husband has one too. So it, it, it's not his. It's not his favorite thing. He 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 thinks to think tunics are sort of dress. <laughs> so I I may cut it apart and and do what the Romans did and recreate those roundels on something for else for me. But I love I love that. I had no idea that this would be one of the last events that I would attend. And this was the, this was the second amazing set of oils that I worked for. I, and, and I, di I didn't apply for, for them. I, I was, uh, Gosh, I'm trying to remember where I was. Uh, oh, <laughs> sure. If I was uh, 
down at uh, Eagles, uh, preparing for my apprentice Vesta's elevation to the Order of the Laurel. And I got a longish uh, message. We'd, we'd like you to consider <laughs> serving as our court coordinator. And I thought, remember what I said. <laughs> remember what I said. Check with your husband. <laughs> So I, I, I messaged Livia back and said, I'm, I am really deeply touched and honored. My, my mental voice was saying, and how did you come to ask me? But I said, I need, I need to talk with my husband first. And af after I got back from Eagles and washed my garb and recovered a bit, I sat down with, with Mark and said, something I want to do, and he knows me really well. And I said, here, here are some of the lessons that I learned from the first time. Um, but I, from, from what I know uh, of this couple, I really think it would be a great experience and I want to do it. And so we, we talked through the parameters and the, the negotiables and the non-negotiables and, and I said yes. And it was such a fantastic experience. This, these, these two and their kids are, are just incredible people. It was, and, and, and again, the, the, you really form a bond with the retinue that, that you serve with. So I'll, I'll, I'll second this again. If you, if in the future you get a chance to serve in any capacity for, for a set of royals, please do. It's, it, it's going to be an experience you'll treasure for the rest of your life. So I'm look, I'm look at the circle that I, I'm wearing because I, I threw my head at, back at one point and, and it went, it went off like a tiddlywink. <laughs> um, I love this pouch that you're carrying. It's Isn't that incredible? So this this is a this is a pouch made by a, a company on Etsy called the Hooded Hair. And I I was at uh, at breakfast at Collegium a year ago, and. Uh, Mr. Satinet had a, a version of this, and I said, "Where did you get that?" <laughs> so she told me, and I, I, I looked it up on my cell phone and ordered it right there at breakfast. It's, <laughs> it's amazing <laughs> because that's the world we live in now. <laughs> I know it's the, the impulse for this. Okay, so yes, I am relentlessly Roman. The, the I love that thing, relentlessly Roman. I am relentlessly <laughs> Roman, uh, but in um, in 2015, I got I I knew I wanted to participate in in perfectly period feast North. It was the first time Montier had done that. Uh, it was 1480 uh, Florence. And I, I was already Kingdom Seneschal, so I, I didn't have the time to research or make anything. And I, I started reaching out to, to uh, people who might uh, do a, a bespoke garment and came upon Celeste and her amazing, amazing team. I might have helped with that garment. <laughs> well, and there's a little bit of a story because the uh, in 2015 I, I was probably about 40 or 50 pounds heavier, and and unbeknownst to me, I was also I also had stomach cancer, but I, I didn't realize that, that at the time. So they they made the garment and and i i wore it and and it was so it was such a fantastic garment i wore it several times since including at uh, 
uh, September crown in 2015. And then I had surgery and lost a whole bunch of weight. So they, she very nicely retailored the, the red portion. And then I had taken the, the, the blue over gown to our local dry cleaner and it burned up. Oh. The, the no. day I was going to pick it up, and I was like, no. And I contacted Celeste and she said, well, she thought she had enough of, of the blue fabric to, to make another one. So I, I paid her to, to make a whole new garment. Wow. And, and because it's still just a fantastic garment, I, I, I trot it out whenever, whenever I, uh, there's an occasion because I, it's, it's such a beautiful, beautiful ensemble. As is this one. This is probably one of the last things. I, I, I don't know what the last garment this, that Celeste made professionally, but when I was uh, put on vigil for the Order of the Pelican, I, I started, and again, I was still King of Seneschal, so I didn't have a whole lot of time, and I was, I was making a, a garment that I thought I would wear, and then I found this amazing fabric on Sartor Bohemia, and you can't really see it in the photograph, but it, uh, it's probably 14th century Persian and it, it's got pelicans and rams and, and the ram is my device. So I, I, I probably screamed out loud and bought as much as, of it as I could. And I contacted her and said, would you have the time <laughs> to make me something? And she did. It's, it's just fantastic. <laughs> this is so cool. Um, was this a surprise? Did you know they were making this? I flat-footed, gobsmacked, totally. So I, I, uh, I mentioned I grew up in, in Adiantum and I went down to, uh, uh, my folks uh, live in a retirement home, which is about, uh, about a mile and a quarter uh, along the, the trail from the Valley River Inn. So I went down a, a, a day or two early to spend some time with them. And, and I got to the site about, I don't know, 1130 or noon on Friday and hooked up with, with Marion and Vesta and, and, and some of the other folks who were setting up. And Marion said, oh, I've got to show you something. So we'd walked through <laughs> and, and came to, what did she call it? It wasn't the Hall of Heroes, but, but I don't know, something like that. And she was showing me all of, all, all of you know, there was Slutvig and, and Torkel and, and all of a sudden she turned me around and I was looking at Torkel and myself. <laughs> <laughs> she says she has video. <laughs> so cool. I, <laughs> it was yeah, I was flabbergasted. So, so yeah, we, we had to stage a picture of, uh, I think this was Sunday uh, before we started tearing things down. And I was staying for a couple of days later. So, so I got to take me and everybody else down. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm just more honored and humbled than I can say. It's pretty it, amazing. Yeah, so, so Raven does the, Mistress Raven does the cartoons for this. And I, I think Mr. Cisalt colors them all in. And they've got, they've got a, a, they go on for days and days and they've got a, a, a really good system for, for how they store all these. And for people who haven't seen these or don't know what they are, they're sort of a, um, they, they are kind of a recreation of stained glass. They're a, they're a plastic sheeting that goes over the windows. And so the light comes through so they're translucent, is that the right word? Oh yeah. So it's it's like it's like a church 
stained glass. It's it's the most incredible thing to do to transform a hotel. Go ahead. So so here, yeah. Oh, your book. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> they glow. Marion says they glow. They do. They glow. They're incredible. They really are. It's And this is you in court doing your thing. Yep. Um, so, <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm not really the story of this picture. I, I, I want you ignore that woman in the foreground, but, but take, take a look at, at the, the, the background because this was, this was at Vesta's vigil party, which, which was, really fun even though it rained like Noah's flood. But, and Mr. C. Salt had, she had a, a raft of, of personal issues that she was dealing with in, in the months leading up to, to Vesta's vigil and elevation, so she couldn't be there. But she was absolutely there in spirit because there were all of these wonderfully painted Minoan hangings in in Kyer Lutris, which I was I was uh, thrilled to be able to stay in. So yeah, we had to kind of act out. <laughs> I think there might be another one. Yeah. And and, <laughs> and here's my darling Vesta and, and me. And there there are a couple there are a couple of lions in the background with their paws. So so we 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 had to to uh, this this is about as as regal as the two of us are ever going to get. <laughs> I don't know. Vesta was pretty regal when she reigned as princess. And look at this. And isn't no. that amazing? It's it's just it's fantastic to be in in elevations that really transport you to to that time and place. And Vesta did an incredible job with with her costume. And, the snakes, the snakes, <laughs> so good. There's a bundle of trouble. Oh. <laughs> I, I, and that was one of the best days because we were, we were, I, I wish I could have recorded that conversation because we were, we were just hanging out in the Kingdom Center Shaw's tent, talking about life, the universe and everything. And, and Kulch is one of those people that, that uh, I, I don't get a whole lot of time to, to really dive into conversations with her. But man, that was one of the best. <laughs> She's amazing. I would not know my husband were it not for her. And this is this is one of my favorite pictures of me, just because not not necessarily because of of what's going on in the foreground, but look at that cart. <laughs> look at that cart. I think so many pictures that we take are are of oh <laughs> this this was an amazing thing to be involved in so so I love I love 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 people who research and and Tulia did all of the research for her wedding and and asked if if I would be in the wedding party. And so, oh well, let me think. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>, please. <laughs> it's so great. And scamp. It's just it's one. My husband. So so he and he was he was the the uh, official. He he was he was the the. Uh, priest of Jupiter wow. and and she asked if I would would be his his wife the priestess it scamp got all the the good good lines like dissecting and and uh, 
and proselytizing and 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 I, I just got to be a, a good Roman wife off to the side, but that was a fantastic town, <laughs> fantastic wedding. And again, this was at Carolutris in, in, uh, at Eagles. So good. And to, to the best of my knowledge, uh, this, this is how the, the priestess of, of Jupiter would have dressed. Uh, the, the, I, I moved the, I, I rebraided the bun to include some, some wool fillets and moved it up a, a little bit. And there's a, uh, there are oak leaves pinned to the front of my tunic. And she, she along with, with the bride would have, have worn this, this long saffron power. We're not having any fun, are we? <laughs> so one of the coolest things about being a peer is, 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 is not all this or that. It's passing on knowledge to people that you care about. And this is, is uh, when I took uh, my apprentice because I, I think she's got talents uh, in, in both arenas, uh, Triona de Mer. Uh, she she's, she's now, I, I call her Triona because I've known her that name the longest. She, she, she too is going on her path of becoming uh, more persona relevant. So her, her SCA name is, is now Catriona. And I have known her, oh gosh, uh, just about as long as I've been in the SCA. She, she and her husband Bacchus, who's, who's uh, uh, extremely talented in his, his own right. So being able to take people into your family who, who you want to learn from as well as teach is such a gratifying experience. Uh, one of the cool things that I've tried to do with, with these ceremonies is uh, Roman clients are, are the, the patron client relationship is is very similar to how we tend to structure uh, apprentices and, and, and protégés and so forth in the SDA. So I, I try to work some of, of that in to my ceremonies. Very cool. Sorry, I switched pictures on you. Nope, here's, here's and here's, Stierkar and Stierna are, are very good friends. Yeah. So I, I forget exactly what I was showing him, prob probably something related to kingdom law. <laughs> it's a very serious moment. <laughs> yeah. And this, one of the really, really cool things about having served as kingdom seneschal is the royals that that you work with and each 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 of the crowns that i've worked with have have been special to me in various ways but this kid he's he he is super super special i Sometimes we have to deal with things that, that are difficult, and sometimes we have to have conversations with people who are difficult. But he has wisdom beyond his years. He, he's a super thoughtful and considerate and um, measured person. Agree. Uh, I, just, I just am so honored that I have been, I, I was able to serve in that role, but, but again, it's, it's not what you're doing. It's really who you're doing it with. 
How did you decide that you wanted to do the Kingdom Seneschal gig? Well, there's a story there. <laughs> um, a, a little bit of backstory. Af after, after I had been a court coordinator for Skig Antasia, I had all of this time to fill. And, and even th for the things that I wasn't doing with my husband to make up for what I had failed to ask beforehand, I said, uh, Bridget, who uh, I don't, I'm trying to remember if she asked me when she was Kingdom Seneschal. I don't think so. She was events coordinator. She, she came to me as only Bridget does and said, I want you to run a Kingdom event. And, and I want you to get Drake involved because they were kind of struggling at that point. And I said, okay, see what I can do. So I, I ran May Crown in uh, 2012. And, and now I'm trying to remember where, where that story was going. Uh, Seneschal. Seneschal. Right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and several years later, when um, I was down at, at Ocean Source for Kingdom Feast, I was, I was sitting in the ANS room and Laurelyn and, and Morgana were using me as, as a model. So I was, I was doing my best to sit still and not talk, which is always difficult for me. <laughs> and Bridget came up and she sat right she pulled a chair and she sat right down in front of me she put her, her hands on my knees and said I want you to apply for Kingdom Center Shaw. I said I I as a re, as a result of having served as, as a event steward for for May Crown I, I volunteered to be a media liaison I've, I've got of communications background. I'm a, a retired freelance writer. I, I'm a loud mouth. I, I, so, so I served in that role and I was serving at the time and, and Bridget said, I want you to do this. Seconds before King Ian and his herald came in and opened court and called all the laurels together and then called my name. <laughs> so your head's just like what <laughs> and for a moment i said damn it there's somebody else using you lila <laughs> <laughs> so i was put on vigil and i was asked to to consider applying for kingdom seneschal and you know i've got a, a background in, in writing, I've got a background in nonprofit administration. So I accepted that, that it was probably part of my skill set. But again, remember that lesson I went back and while my head was spinning full of, of all, all of the things that I, I then enacted for my uh, Laurel elevation, I, I got I got the elevation all figured out with within about a six hour drive back to to Wenatchee. And I thought, okay, sweetheart, we need to sit down and talk. And, I, and so Mark and I talked about it and I said, here's my understanding of of what's involved and how much time it's going to take. And I I I only want to do it for two years. That's that's a hard deadline. Uh, I, I stuck with it, and, and I, I I'm glad I did. I I was I was missing it when I stepped down, but but it was the right it was the right thing to do, and and it's always really good to to leave a party a little too soon than a little too late. For sure. For but sure. Uh, but yeah, I I I started out uh, doing projects as a I, several months went by and, and I was appointed uh, by the crown as Central Contingency and, and I started kind of working into the role. Training. Who did you train under? Who was Seneschal when you, when you were training? Dame Bridget. Oh, okay. Good. 
Okay, I'm going to start sharing screen again. Let's see. <laughs> I love this because Mar I love Morgana and and this kind of inlands right here. This is kind of who I think of as as like. Yep. Speak, speaking, speaking of Morgana, I just, I, I've, I've been writing people during the year and occasionally I get, uh, I get letter back. So today I just got a wonderful hand painted card from Morgana. She's wonderful. I, I adore her. So, <laughs> so I, yeah, I don't usually have to make this kind of entrance, but the the eve of my vigil i sprained my ankle um and I, I got this i was called back into court after my elevation for for an announcement of some kind and i was i was sitting back in in the waste camp pavilion i said i can't i i can't i can't walk anymore and uh and phelan and aaron scooped me up <laughs> carried me in Awesome. <laughs> so, so I was super excited with this. What I was, what I was being shown was I, I got uh, a, a, a pelican medallion that came to me from some of the people who, who I'm not going to cry. <laughs> So um, I, I got one of Master Arc's medallions that originally came from, from uh, Viscountess Callista. She, she and, and her then husband, Viscount Donnan, be, uh, agreed to be royal peers for, for the College of Cranehaven. Uh, she finagled to, to come and visit during Kingdom ANS when I was placed on vigil for the Order of the Pelican, but of course she doesn't live here anymore and couldn't be there for the elevation. But to receive a, a medallion that, that had come through many hands, including hers, was an incredible moment. <sighs> there. <laughs> We're kind of going backwards in time. I apologize. Oh, this is this is fine. So the the cool and the coolest thing about this too is, uh, I was I was sitting in, in court. This is at Kingdom A and S, and it, it it was a really fun event because I was kind of playing hooky. Yes, I'm a Laurel, and I went to the Laurel meetings and and I judged some things, but I was really there to have a good time, and I was. Sit, I was sitting in, in court and uh, uh, towards the end and uh, uh, Kingdom Center Shaw has business in this court. And I thought, I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing. I am off duty, man. You have a little moment of panic of what are they talking about? Yeah. Oh, I've, I've, I've got a, a strong streak of smart assery. <laughs> so, and so here, here, I, here I am after the offer's been made, but beforehand, they called up all of the Kingdom Seneschals past and uh, to to come and into the court, and then they turned us all around to face the audience and said, and. Said one of one of these is not like the other, and I said yes, I am Roman. <laughs> but no, that wasn't it. They were all pelicans, and and I wasn't. And I think I have a picture of that. There we go. That was that was a very happy. Uh, evening party and and the thing that i love 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 about this picture is 
look at the breadth of, of history and experience that each of these people have brought, not only to, to the role of Kingdom Seneschal, but, but how, how they've impacted how we play the game. These, these people are role models. They're my role models. They should be your role models. <sighs> <laughs> I love to laugh. They... So, so this is a perfect period, perfectly period feast. That was an amazing experience. You know. I, I, I went through Golden Swan and, and this was one of those really transformative events because we were all, we were all dressed out in the same time period. We were all eating off the same dishes. It, it was an incredible experience. And I got to dance, I almost never get to dance. <laughs> I'd like to back up and talk about, um, I don't think I could find any pictures of Golden Swan, but I'd like to talk about what that event is. And um, I guess I'll, I'll stop sharing for now. Okay. Um, and and what, what you went through in that event and what it entails. Well, one of the things that I think attracted me to Golden Swan and, and uh, I, I mentioned Oso uh, uh, a while back, uh, Mr. Soso, who, who really doesn't play much anymore, uh, and it's such a shame because she's she is an incredible role model for anybody who is interested in in Asian personas. She she her her Mongolian garb uh, was fantastic. She is amazing. And, and she was really a kind of a quiet leader. So she quietly suggested that, that I might want to come up and, and see what it was all about. Because at that, that point, I, she had taken me as a student and it being me, I started making long lists of goals that I had. I, I, want, I want, remember that polyester garb that, that you saw? <laughs> That, that was one of the things that I made for, for ancient sites in the long ago. And I didn't know anything about, uh, about how fabrics were uh, or the construction. And, and I, I st so I started making lists of things that I wanted to do to improve my garb. And she already knew that I was interested in, in some various other components. So she suggested that I come and see what it was all about. And I even, I even got to student judge. I wasn't a golden swan uh, the year before I went through it. But once I saw it, I thought, oh man, this is so exciting. You know, it's really the culmination of, of what needs to be uh, two or three years of really solid research on how you as, as a, a Roman woman uh, or, or another persona live your life. What's, what's your habitat? What are your customs? What, what's, it, it, it's really creating a, a fully blown, three-dimensional, believable character that you stay in for about 36 hours straight. So it was one of the more transformative uh, ev events that I've ever participated in. And how do they have it set up? Does everybody have kind of their own space that it encapsulates their own persona? It's, it's not necessarily uh, required that, that your habitat be persona uh, appropriate though, because everybody has, has different pocketbooks. Right. But I, I decided that I wanted to have a, a, a persona believable tent 
and since since uh, a, a since a goat skin Roman tent is kind of out there for me, I that I bought a a, a um, eight by ten Roman style wall tent that actually came from a Civil War settler, and. I had, I don't, I think one of the things that, and I've always sort of struggled about, why am I a Laurel, okay? Um, uh, I, I'm, I'm really interested in, in all of the trappings that, and the set that, that make your space a believable Roman space. So, so yeah, I've, I've got a water jug that's that's pressed grapes uh, when i when i see things that that i then i that i can decorate my space with i, I tend to go for them to the extent that i can haul any more stuff with me um which is getting to be an issue <laughs> i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> um so I, I had already, by this time, I, I'd been researching Roman daily life since 1996 or 1997. So I, I kind of had a leg up, but I was, I, was not, I was not interested in late antiquity. And I had to place myself at the, the lower threshold of, of years that they would allow participants was 450. Hmm. Now, well, crap, I'm not really interested in late antiquity, but, but I do want to give this a try. So I, I started researching what was going on in the fifth century. And, you know, interestingly enough, it, it has a lot of, of uh, application to what we're seeing today. Cultures in crisis are really interesting to study. The, the, the economy is falling apart. The trade routes are crap. Our, our government is corrupt. Wow, okay, this is really interesting. <laughs> so I, I, went, I went through uh, Golden Swan in, gosh, it's been a long time ago now, 15 years. But it, because I became so engrossed in in what was going on in the fifth century, I had when I started playing in the SCA, it was you know right about that second century, early to mid Principate. But now I'm I'm a fifth century Roman woman, <laughs> and um, you continued to to pursue that persona, and eventually ended up with a carp as well. That being, being a laurel is cool. Being a carp, that's the best award in the SCA. Why? Because it's really an acknowledgement that, that you, you can put on an act, um, but this, this is a testament that, that we believe that you are what you say you are. I am a Roman woman. Uh, and to the extent when, when I can fall into to talking at, at events about what's going on in my Roman life, it's, and, and especially if somebody else uh, picks up the cues and, and plays along, it's transformative. That's awesome. If somebody wanted to um, develop their persona or their um, encampment or their kit, and they're on a limited budget, how would you recommend to them that they start and they progress? So I found, I found this at a, a local antique store. It's about, it was, it's about 15 bucks. So, so it's, it's, it's kind of on the high side for somebody who's, who's on a budget. But I started, and this is why I got to stay out of secondhand stores, okay? <laughs> when, when you know what you're looking for. Uh, study the paintings, look at the frescoes. Um, 
I've got I've got a, a Roman lamp here, and I I have a stand for it that I bought at a secondhand store, right? So I I spent about thirty five bucks for the lamp, but but the the little brass stand maybe cost me a buck at Salvation Army. When when you can see things that that are plausibly from your time period and you, you know you know the shapes of of the glassware you 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 can you can see you can see the fabric and know that you can repurpose that pattern for for decorative elements you can become a really really smart sca thrifter i i in my beginnings, I did a lot of that as well. I've got some, I've got this big brass pot thing that we use as a, as an oil lamp. It's really candles. Um, that's the same thing. It, it was like, I don't know, three bucks at Value Village. Yeah, it looks like that, but it's brass. Yeah. <laughs> so is, this is the coolest thing. And I bought it at, at, at a secondhand store many, many years ago for a buck. That's perfect. Yeah, so I, I, I think that's a that's a totally legit um, option. Um, Duchess, uh, oh my God, and her name. I'm looking Livia. at her. Livia, thank you. I'm looking at her mundane name on Facebook and I'm like, oh no. Um, she asked a question and I can't scroll to it for some reason, but I, I'll get the gist of it. Um, she wanted to know um, how you think you can ignite a passion for developing persona, especially during COVID times and, and what your tips and tricks would be for that. As, as hard as it is, I think this is really an incredible opportunity to, to do a deep dive into research. And I know that's hard for some people. Um, I, I like, I like to Equate research with with uh, trying to reconstruct a puzzle when when you're or 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 doing Alice through the Looking Glass and you're diving down that that rabbit hole you're looking for something that you don't know the answer to that might be out there and and you know research can sometimes be a, a solitary passion, but it really, I think it, we do best when we've, we've got an opportunity to kind of say, here's where I'm going with this. What do you think? Um, that, that's, I, I miss people terribly in the SCA because, I, I, because those conversations are so important to me. I, I get my creative juices through talking to other people. And I'm an extrovert. No, probably everybody knows that who's, who's seen me. So, <laughs> yeah. um, but this is such an opportunity for us to to kind of do our homework. And yeah, there I've got I've got a ton of uh, persona development pieces that I can send people who are who are really interested. One of the things that that has has really gratified me this year as I started writing letters in persona to various people in the kingdom. Um, I, 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 I love writing because I've, I've got these, uh, these, these, these are little wooden tablets that I made that, and I, I, I write them in new Roman cursive, which nobody can read. And, and <laughs> but they know you're thinking about them. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I usually send a translation. I was going to say, you put a translation in there. Because otherwise, yeah, you know, <laughs> my, my own handwriting isn't that great. So, but d doing, doing things, even really small things that kind of center you in, in, in persona are really gratifying. And they don't have to be big things. Yeah. Just Sitting, sitting down, sit down and write a letter about your day and, and trans, transpose 
our modern lives into what might have been happening in in your home where where we all have been dispersed to now that that we can't be together does that make sense it does it does um are there any resources that you've found that have given you a surprising context for your study of culture i'll give you an example like i um i i do scythian and so they were not a literate culture and so i've kind of gone around them in culture and time um, and looked at different fairy tales from different cultures and looked at the music, more modern music, but that has its roots. Um, and those things have lent a really um, interesting depth to my understanding of the culture and, and, and taken me in new places and new ways of thinking about the material culture that I found. I see what you're saying. One of the things that that um, it it works for me, and and it's it's a it's a bit of a oh, it's more than a bit of a stretch. You know, when we can tell because I've I've got I've got reproductions that I've have manufactured of of Roman uh, style uh, musical instruments, uh, symbols, and so forth. I've got. I've got a liar that uh, Master Ulrich uh, made hanging up on the wall. We we have music in Roman culture, but almost no way to reconstruct what what the what the Roman top forty might have been. So one of the things that I found years ago were were uh, some CDs by oh there's a uh, an Italian uh, set of, of performers called Sinalia. And there were, was another CD that was made by um, uh, some British people who, who did what, what we all do in the SCA, kind of plausibly reconstructed what, what uh, Roman music might have sounded like. Wow, for me, that really takes me away in in really special ways right. some some of it's kind of hard to listen to but but <laughs> i have a, a friend uh who is a, a throat singer and has been to two yeah. and competed and i took a class a throat singing class from him and one of the songs that he teaches is a song uh that a woman it's like a blessing song that a woman would sing when she wakes up in the morning and she would spread like mare's milk uh, to the four directions and sing this song. And I listened to that, to him sing that, like I, I taped the class, taped, whatever, recorded it. Um, Cause I'm old and I say tape. <laughs> and I listened to that over and over again. And it was really transformative to, you know, and it made me, it allowed me to kind of sink into thinking about what my yurt would look like and and what things i wanted to add to my sca yurt to to get it to feel more authentic and more real i think so much about uh, persona is it it's it's more than just something that i see people tend to fall into the pattern in, in sca is to, to refer to themselves in the third person well, I'm a, a, a fifth century Roman woman, instead of saying, I was born in 401 in Uraconium Coronorbionum. I married my husband at age 13 and we, we moved through Gaul, uh, uh, visiting my, my family homelands in Southern Gaul and eventually wound up in uh, our wine estates near Tayanum Sidicum. Talking about myself as, as I am in the fifth century is part of it. Eating the foods that, that were probably cooked at that time, having the settings, 
and and occasionally when when my my one term Latin is up to it uh, reciting Latin poetry, just trying to find every single aspect of of how my life would have been. Hopefully that uh, answers her grace's question. <laughs> Thank you. Um, let's go back to pictures. So this is you stepping up as Kingdom Seneschal? That's right. I, I, I stepped up at, at, uh, at Twelfth Night down in Adiantum. This, this, is, this is a ginormous cape. Um, I believe Duchess Ludwig had painted that. I've never seen it before. Really? Yeah. Have that, you seen it before, Rifkin? No. That, I, that, that and, and the, the official table leg are, are the accoutrements of, of the Santa Shala's office. I've seen the table leg, but I'd never seen this cape before. And I was like, wow, I need to know the story because I wonder it, how old it is. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very impressive when it's, when, when it, and, and it's big, it, 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 fit, it fits much larger people than me. <laughs> Did you feel uh, dwarfed in it? <laughs> One size fits most. Uh, somebody wants to know if I got a picture of the socks you were wearing, and I did not. So I love this picture because it looks it's that was so much fun. Mm -hmm. This so we were at uh, Iron and Ink, uh, which is one of of the premier events that the Inlands Laurels have have conducted. Not not necessarily every year, certainly not this year, where where we can bring laurels and and uh, other teachers from around the kingdom to the inlands to inspire the many really talented artists of of the inlands so there's my aoa <laughs> and my and my polyester garb like i said we're moving backwards <laughs> And you got your AOA from Gennar and Gabrielle. That's right. So right, right after Rifkin got knighted. Oh, wow. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that would be 2003, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I... This is my laurel ceremony, and and I, I'm probably the plainest laurel in in the history of the world. <laughs> but I, I think I mentioned I, I I didn't have to think a whole lot about my ceremony on on the way back from from uh, Kingdom Feast, because I knew exactly what I wanted to do. Um, in Roman culture. Women, women had more freedoms than, say, uh, our sisters in Greece. But the the highest status women with the the most freedoms and the greatest prestige were the six Vestal virgins. They Vestals were with some restrictions. <laughs> were able to move around in Roman society. They, they were allowed uh, a lictor uh, carrying, carrying the fasces, which were usually uh, honors only given to uh, Roman officials like, like uh, consuls, tribunes, and so forth. So I wanted to reenact uh, uh, and portray a, a Vestal Virgin for my laurel ceremony. You just make me want to sing a whiter shade of pale. <laughs> <laughs> You're not 16, okay? And same thing. I I, I created a vest, uh, a vigil space. Poor Gouline. I, I asked her to be my wrangler, and then it wouldn't let her do anything. <laughs> You're so bossy. Uh, so 
I, I created a, ves, uh, a vigil space called it Per Vigilium Ulili and created a variety of, of uh, games uh, that uh, I, I threw out there, which were common uh, during the, the social time after uh, Romans got together and, and had a feast. They, they would have a series of philosophical questions or drinking games and so forth. So I created a whole bunch of, of kind of philosophical SCA questions and had had my guests draw them out and attempt to answer and then most of them had no particular right answer but they were they were in the spirit of of that particular roman so, social activity and and I had a little, little booklet that explained all that I still have copies up there very cool I was very interested to look at this headpiece. Tell me about it. Ah, oh, so the the laurel wreath it was made by Master William Bjornsson, who also I asked him to do my medallion, which is really fantastic. You can't see the the details here, but it's an inscribed carnelian. And I asked William to do this because he was one of the first people that I met at Twelfth Night 2002, my very first event. And I was wandering through Merchant's Row with a lot of medieval stuff. <laughs> and here he was, and he had a couple of uh, 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 pairs of, of gold and emerald Roman earrings. And they were too much money. And I said, wrap them up. <laughs> <laughs> so I knew when, when I was on vigil that I wanted him to do my regalia. And I, I had seen his website and, and saw the, the laurel circlet. And you know, if you're Roman, you just have to have one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and this, is this a wool coiled? It's, I, I cheated a bit, the, the, the uh, it's, it is a, an approximation and, and Vesta also did this uh, as well or better than I did. This is a, a kind of an apotropaic uh, wool fillets which vestals wore um i, I mentioned the the uh, uh flaminica uh, dialis the the priestess of jupiter she wore one brides wore one usually with a, a veil over the top i had to take that off to to have uh, king yin seat the circlet so Wool and and the, the the particularly some of the colors of wool had had apotropaic or, or supernatural powers. Interesting. And the red was one was one of those colors. Correct. There's a lot of spiritual significance uh, for red in my in my culture as well. I, just, I find that very interesting. <laughs> So we're, we're looking we're looking at my little retinue. Written, uh, uh, Sorry, I didn't pause. And, and I just I decided to to, uh, to recite a, a passage which I adapted from a fifth century poet called Rutilius Namatianus uh, to praise on tear as I was walking in, because like, I figured just walking in wasn't enough, you know? <laughs> Very cool. And, and there I am getting my AOA. So what a long, strange trip it's been. <laughs> 
And there, okay, there is Golden Swan. And one of the things that, that I think I might have, have alluded to that makes being in persona ever so much fun is when you have other people around you who are doing it with you. And this group of ladies, uh, Golden Swan, for people who are, who are remotely interested in giving this a try, it's the judging is done in, in a, a very collegial aspect. We're, we're coming together from our various countries and, and opening conversations about what life is, where you come from. Tell, 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 us, tell us about various aspects. So you sit down and, and you, you just start spouting all of the things that you've learned over the, the course of your research. And, and other people tell you about how life is back in their home. And it, it, it is just wonderfully transformative. So cool. And I'm teaching there. Uh, this this was at uh, Baroness Wars several years ago, and I was teaching a class. I'm trying to remember what it was, and it might have been persona development for all I know. <laughs> we'll say it's persona development because it, it fits. Might, sure it fits right in. Of course it was. <laughs> Goop, John, golly. I think it was, I think it was my job. Yep. <laughs> I think it's so cool that you have pictures of all of these. I don't think I have pictures of all of mine. I just got lucky. Okay. This, this was right after I bought that tent. It was before I had gone to, to uh, Golden Swan and I set it up in the backyard because you, you should know how to set up your tent before you go anywhere. And I thought, well, I've got to decorate it. So this this was a, taken a long time ago. But it looks super cool. I love it. I just, I, 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 I did set up my tent uh, this spring in the backyard and slept in it a lot. Uh, oh, I just, I just love, love, love my space. What's, what's the wood thing that's sort of going up on a diagonal behind the, um, but like a pan? <laughs> it has it right there. Oh, there it is. Oh. Cool. <laughs> well, Yulia Zamfir. Yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> that's so cool. So, so yeah, I... that's awesome. Okay. Yeah. I really wanted to set my yard up this summer, but my husband would not cooperate with me. So oh, I just, I just love that space. So that's full circle. Wow. Cool. <laughs> oh, this is so me leaning in. <laughs> well, um, so much more I can say. Oh. <laughs> Oh, Duchess Livia is saying that you even do this when you camp in cabins at event. Your whole bunk was Romaned out. And it's a shame because she was she was up uh, above me. So so yeah, I, I tend I tend to fill all available space. <laughs> cool. That's great. Um, have we skipped anything? I'm trying to Oh my goodness. You really talked about your administrative. Oh, well, you know, it's, I, I, I love doing it, but I, I don't know how, how much can I say about telling people what to do? Well, I, I think that you, um, like there are a lot of forms that are regularly used by retinue. Um, I'm thinking particularly, um, when somebody is offered peerage, 
there's now a form that you can fill out <laughs> that covers. I cannot take credit for that. I, I think the originator of, of the, the very, very thorough uh, peerage elevation form came from, from Mr. Suula many years ago. You know, the, the organization is, isn't necessarily, you've got to make all of the, the things. It, it's, it's, see, it's seeing how all of these pieces work together. And, and most importantly, how you treat people who are interacting with you as you were doing all of these things. When, back, way back when, when uh, I took over court coordinator from Baroness Berengaria, uh, before she went off to, to study in Hawaii, she, she gave me a whole lot of helpful information and the tools that she used. But the most important thing she, she said, and, I, and I've taken it hard ever since, is, is uh, people look to you at, to see how things are going. So paste a smile on your face from the moment you walk out of your tent and people will think that everything is all right. And you know what? They will be. <laughs> Even if it's all falling apart. <laughs> uh, Countess Octavia once said to me, be the duck on the water be smooth on the surface. Even if you're paddling like hell underneath and struggling, just be the duck on the water. Exactly. But I think most importantly, and, and I, tried to, I, I tried to take this to heart with the biggest organizational thing I've, I've dealt with being Kingdom Seneschal is be kind. Pe people, people are going through all, all manner of stress, e even the, the, the ordinary mundane stress of putting on an event, which is substantial, right? Mm -hmm. Be kind. Um, what what is uh, as in, in your turn? Sorry, <laughs> that just didn't come out of my mouth right at all. Um, during your tenure as Seneschal, um, what is something that happened that you got to be a part in that was particularly joyful and cool for you? You know, it's, I've never gotten over just being able to, to be a fly on the wall and watching court from, from the vantage point of the Royals and, or the Kingdom of Seneschal, 10. The, the, there's, there's a reason why the Seneschal tent needs to be close to, to the Royal encampment because the, the crown needs to have uh, consultations frequently, but it's, it's also a fantastic vantage point on, on seeing really worthy people getting some wonderful awards and that uh, it never gets old. It just never gets old. Very cool. Very cool. Um, <clears throat> so as we're kind of in COVID times and things seem to be changing a little bit, um, what do you uh, see going forward? Like the, any changes that we've already made that will need to be maintained or what would you like to see happen? Um, I really, really wish that we would use this. And I'm kind of a policy wonk. That's, that's the, the other thing that I've done in, in, in administratively, but I think because we can't do anything actively, this is such a, uh, an opportunity for the organization as a whole to take a giant step back saying, we've been doing the same thing for 54 years. What, what could we be doing moving forward? We've, we've obviously opened up uh, an incredible door being able to talk to each other on a regular basis. It's, you know, this, this isn't as good as being at an event, but it's, it's, it's way better than, than sitting alone, being completely isolated. But I think more from an administrative standpoint, I, I would love to see the, the organization from the board on down 
take a take a step back and and assess how we do things how how we select board members how how can we make that more transparent i was really excited though i couldn't uh, participate to see that that the the board held its meetings online that should be happening on a regular basis yeah i was super excited about that too i think it's a great step i think that people hold that body in such great mystery and they give it so much more than it really is and and like like everything that we don't know about uh, i th i think we all automatically default to the negative when when it's 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 not necessarily so but but that and that's why being transparent is so very important the other thing that that and my husband who's who's uh got to sit back and uh, and listen to a whole lot of conversations while his kingdom center shall said geez you make things complicated <laughs> and we do it, that's one of the big challenges with and it's not just the sca it's just about any any volunteer organization that i've been involved with you, you tend to to pile procedures on procedures uh, and, and and we create policies reactively instead of proactively saying how where do we want this to go and in my standpoint proactive positive policies are the most sustain sustainable that's what i'd like to see interesting i could go on and on <laughs> Um, so we're at a little over two hours. Can you believe it? Uh, no. <laughs> it goes by fast. Is there anything that you really wanted to talk about that uh, we haven't hit on? No, I, I, I'm, I'm so honored to have this conversation with, with you all. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for what you are doing to, to keep us connected and, and learn about each other in ways that I, I just, we have lots of wonderful five minute conversations at, at SCA events, but this is so much more. Yeah. Yeah. It's been amazing. It's been an amazing experience. I think for both of us. Thank you both from, yeah. for on, from my behalf and from everybody else who's, who's had the pleasure of watching you. Well, it, it's been very um, fulfilling for us on a personal level as well. So, um, well, it's a huge investment of time. So it, it is, it's a huge investment of time. I was, tr I was trying to count up all the interviews I've done um, and I, it's well over a hundred now. Yep. Wow. So um, yeah. Um, and each of those is hours of preparation time as yeah. well. Of course. Yeah. Well, from, from the hundredth plus one, Thank you so very much. Well, thank you. thank you for agreeing to do this. I, I just think it's such a great way for um, people to to meet other people. Like I, you know, even me, like now I can put names to faces that I never could before. And now I know if I'm really interested in some administrative thing, you're the person I'm going to come to see. So. Anytime. Yeah. And, yeah. and one thing we didn't talk about was your teaching and how um, so many people look to you to for administrative guidance and and rave reviews about you all the time from people. Oh my goodness, is pretty cool. It is. It is. Well, the praise the praise of worthy people is that's that's what you can you you can pink into letters on my tombstone. <laughs> uh, well thank you everyone for joining us tonight um i am interviewing duke Chalon on sunday that should be very interesting he's one of the pillars of eight and Velt, um so that'll be cool and who are you and then don't you have dag on monday oh yeah i have duke dag from the middle on monday as well um that'll be really interesting too he's reigned in the middle quite a few times and then on Tuesday, I have uh, Duchess 
and I'm gonna I'm gonna butcher this Tang Whistle, uh, Katharina Tudor de Corsi. She's a, a Laurel and Order of the Rose. Um, and then on Wednesday we have Duchess. Um, uh, is Araya her? That's not her. No, whistle. Helga. Oh my God, I can't believe I did that. Um, we have Duchess Helga on Wednesday. <laughs> really already? God, time yeah. is flying. Time is like buzzing by, it's crazy. Here's um, been weird. So it'll be a fun, it'll be a fun week next week. Yeah, definitely. And thank you so much again. And thanks everyone for joining us and we'll see you next time. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye.